Hey guys, it's the History Nerd, and we're here with something new today. Order of Battle Pacific. Uh, developed by the Artistocrats. That's taken a lot of mental energy to not call them the Aristocrats, but it is the Artistocrats, as you can see way down at the bottom of the screen. Published by Slytherin Studios. This is kind of a sequel to Panzer Corps. Now, it's not Panzer Corps 2. Uh, obviously, <clears throat> as you can see, Pacific is prominent in the name, and it's order of battle. It's not even Panzer Corps Pacific. And the game's a little bit like it. Uh, just to get this out of the way right at the start of the video, I was contacted by a Slytherin Publishing, who uh, humbled me by noticing that I'd been playing Panzer Corps, saw that I enjoyed it, and kindly provided me with a copy of this game to give it a let's see, to give it a little try out. And uh, I got it last week. I've put about 26 hours into the game. <clears throat> so that should tell you what's going on. Basically, the Coles notes on this thing is it's Panzer Corps in the Pacific, but it gets much more detailed than that. What we're going to do for this Let's Look At is load up the final mission of the tutorial. And we're going to take a look at the game. Why the final mission of the tutorial? Well, because it's got the culmination of pretty much everything that you can get. Now, Panzer Corps, uh, specifically, you know, like in the Norway mission, had a very limited and sort of after-thought-out naval side to it. Uh, obviously, with this being the Pacific, you've got to focus in a bit more on Navy, and they've done that here. So, what I'm going to do is load up the last mission in the tutorial. Now, for clarification, for those of you out there saying there's no such thing as hardcore strategy games anymore, the tutorial, the five mission tutorial that this game provides took me three and a half to four hours to get through. That was just a tutorial. And as you can see, the tutorial ends on the 6th of December, 1941. So, this game, she's, she's a legit game. <clears throat> We're going to get into the mission briefing, and then we'll get underway. So, the final training exercise combines everything our recruits have learned so far, placing all three military branches in a combined operation, Army, Navy, and Air Force. And this is why I'm showing it to you guys first up. Oops, let me actually click next. <clears throat> the invasion fleet is positioned along the opponent's coastline defenses. Establishing a beachhead is the first objective, supported by warships and aircraft. From there, we must concentrate on improving the flow of supplies. This can be achieved by capturing enemy supply depots marked as secondary objectives. The final objective is to break through the coastal defense perimeter and capture the primary victory point located in the nearby city. Now you can see the primary point by the gold star. I think there is only one on this map. Some maps have more, so that's just something to keep in mind. Uh, if the green team, which is us, can keep their, excuse me, excellent performance and successfully complete these war games, they will finally be ready to serve in our proud military forces. So what I've done is uh, to get a good feel of this game, and we can see we got submarines available. We're not even going to worry about those. To get a good feel for this game, uh, I played through the tutorial, and then I did some of the Japanese and some of the American campaign. Both are options, and where Panzer Corps had <clears throat> a branching campaign. And by branching, what I would suggest anyone to do to, who's interested in how branching the Panzer Corps campaign is, is to just Google image search the Panzer Corps campaign tree, and just the basic tree, it's crazy. And you know you could get you know, minor victories, major victories, defeats, and then depending upon those, it would branch off into all crazy directions. It seems like this game has a very much more streamlined campaign for both the Americans and the Japanese. That doesn't mean that each mission is going to be the same every time. As we will see in this tutorial mission, there will be event, an event, sometimes more depending on the mission, and previous missions, where according to secondary objectives, which I think we can check here, uh, according to secondary objectives, different events can happen. So we can see here, 
our primary objective is of course to capture the primary victory point and then we need to capture two secondary victory points within 10 turns and capture both airfields for the secondary objectives. Now this is the last mission of the tutorial, so it, it doesn't really matter what we do. Anything we accomplish in the tutorial here isn't really going to advance into the main campaign, which is good. I mean, it shouldn't. This is how you learn the game. And again, it, it teaches you the game. It, like I say, it's a four hour tutorial. So, well, three hour, four hour, depending. Whatever it is, it's a very long tutorial and it's good. It's good that it's long, Games like this need a lot of explanation. Uh, and I'm going to do my best to catch you guys up from the past four tutorial missions to show you guys what this game is about. Now, looking at it, it looks a lot like Panzer Corps set in the Pacific. And fundamentally, it basically is. Uh, from a war strategy game, it's, uh, it's not quite at the Grognard level. You know, it's not like... D different units have completely different stats and different weightings and different attacks and depending on this and that and the other thing it's not to say any tank units for example are better at attacking attacking tank units and infantry but it is quote-unquote streamlined this is still look i'm not the greatest strategy gamer out there i just love these games this game can still get in depth and um if we hold down space you can see you know, all these little numbers, that's supply. So we'll get into that in a bit because it does factor in. Um, these are all the units that I have purchased throughout the tutorial. And as far as I know, these suckers will stick with me into the main campaign for the most part. I don't think I get the Catalina, but I do believe I'll be able to keep the Yorktown and my fighters and, and artillery and all that other stuff. But... You know, I've been going on for six, seven minutes now, so I imagine you guys are itching for a little bit of gameplay. This game did release today. The price point is, I believe, 39 Canadian. No, maybe a bit more Canadian, but it's got a 10% discount during release week, so, you know, it's, it's around the $40 USD mark. So not quite a AAA release, but it's still, you know, a bit of an investment. Especially compared to what Panzer Corps is sitting at right now, the, well, the base game of Panzer Corps. Anyway, um, I've put in, I've had this game for a week, I've put in about 26 hours. So, right off the bat, if you like Panzer Corps, you're probably going to like this game. And if you want some more hex-based strategy, uh, modernized in the vein of Panzer General... <coughs> you should probably pick this game up. Anyway, <clears throat> what I'm going to do first off is obviously replace the losses in my core units. Now, thankfully, I've got a little bit of Panzer Corps experience, so I know my core units, I'm going to spend the extra money to make sure these guys get elite replacements so that, I mean, obviously, they've, they've earned no real experience except for this cruiser. It's got a little bit. Um, but you're going to want to make sure your core forces... You know, level up, because as the game goes on, it's good to have advanced units. Let's go over the UI. We got our money here. We've got our deployable infantry, our deployable navy, and our deployable air force. So when I started, I mentioned how the, the navy aspect of Panzer Corps took a little bit of backseat. In this mission, it's not going to play that much of a factor, although there still will be... Uh, some naval combat going on. It looks like I can't deploy the Catalina, so we get no scout plane. I'm not going to bother about deploying my aircraft carrier, but we will get the rest of my units in. We'll get our infantry down. We'll, well, yeah, we'll slap a cruiser down there. Get some marines in. Get our tank. Get all our units in place. For reference, you can put leaders in, as you can see, this little hex base, I believe, I'm like 98% certain, this is this commander's radius, and if we take a look at this guy, we'll hit the info panel, Sergeant McNeil has a plus one attack against infantry, and I think, I'm pretty sure, if any units are around in here, they will get that bonus as well. Not 100%. But I believe that's how it works. Let's slap down our cruiser, which we can't do. We've hit our supply limit, I would imagine. So let's just go ahead and get on with the game. Now, like I say, 
if you're a fan of Panzercore, and I probably should have upgraded that guy a bit more, this will be instantly familiar to you. At least, the basics. So we'll just move our forces in, and start hammering home. I guess I did decide to deploy the Yorktown. I'm kind of excited about showing this game off, so bear with me. Uh, we'll take our fighter, push him up in front. We'll take another fighter unit and push him up in front. As we can see, we got the Fog of War, so we don't really know what's out there. We know the enemy has a destroyer and a destroyer, but we can see here our radar is telling us there is an aircraft unit. We don't know what kind, but there's an aircraft unit there. So that's good to remember. Uh, we can move our torpedo bomber up and we'll get our Dauntless Dive Bomber in on a run on that coastal gun. Then we can start getting our land invasion set. So, you know, I mean, fundamentally, this just looks like maybe Panzer Corps in the Pacific. And I'm going to be referencing that game a lot. Now, the Artistocrats... Uh, some of those guys did work on Panzer Corps and then formed their own company, the Art Istocrats. And this is their first full release game published by Slytherin Studios. What do we got? Who hasn't moved? You? You can fire. Why not? Who else? Who else hasn't moved? Well, we don't really necessarily need to move the Lexington, but we will. So... Let's just get these guys in. This is the one problem about reviewing these types of games, is that when you actually get into playing them, you gotta think about stuff, you know? So we, we took some losses on our Devastator, but we can still do a torpedo run on this destroyer. To great effect. And we will get our units in, closer in for the landing. We might as well move our cruiser up. See if we can't do a little bit more damage to this coastal gun. Because this coastal gun will start opening up on our transports. And that's just not fair. You know, to have our infantry shelled before they can even make landfall. But hey, that's, that's the way war works. So let's get these guys into position. Yeah, you can move. We'll send you down south and send the rest of you guys in here. And what I'm going to do, because it is going to take a couple of turns for us to get in contact with the enemy. So I'm just going to break recording here and get ourselves in to a good situation where I can show off some of the non-air combat that's going on. Um, one of the things you do have to remember with combat uh, in air, it's a little bit different than ground forces, when attacking an air unit, so you can see here we've got eight and nine strength fighters up against a four strength fighter. When you attack an air unit, the strength of the defending unit is what's factored in because as air units get spread out and, you know, smaller in numbers, it's harder to track down individual fighters compared to an entire squadron. So there's a little bit of tweaking game rules every now and then that affect uh, certain combat, certain maneuvers, stuff like that. So um, yeah, what I'm going to do, just come back when we got some combat. So I'll see you guys in a bit. All right. So one of the things that this game has where the main campaign is pretty linear, the secondary objectives uh, provide differences in gameplay. So in one of the tutorial missions, we had a situation where we started off in the bottom left-hand corner with a small island to capture. Then in the, f in the right side of the map, there was a bigger island to capture. And then up in the top left corner, there was a smaller one with an airfield. This airfield was where the opposing troops paratroopers were staging off of. In this mission, I captured that island. And so those paratroopers switched to my side. Now in this mission, because I did that, we now have paratrooper trainees 
who are ready to go. So you can see we've got two units of paratroopers up here. So we're going to go ahead and start moving these guys in. Now one of the things you do have to worry about, like I was saying, was the supply. So as you can see, these supply ships here, they, they can't really defend themselves, but they allow your units up here to get supplied. So as you can see, some of these units are yellow. This guy's red. He's taken an awful lot of damage fighting. So we'll pull him off the front line and just sort of march our units in and around to reposition. The longer you leave a unit in supply without moving them or doing anything, uh, this number will change from a yellow to a white. So white means you're in supply. Yellow means things are getting a little bad, but not too bad. Red means this unit doesn't have much supply at all. It needs some help. And these yellow dots probably mean, and I say probably because I'm not 100% certain, but I'm pretty sure that they don't actually have enough supply. So I'm going to move up another supply ship to try and get supply in. Now, as you can see, as your supply ships take damage, the less supply they're able to provide and so on and so forth. Supply plays a factor in this. It's a lot like um, if you've played Unity of Command, which I tried to do, but that game, it's not me. Uh, supply plays a big part in that. So this is kind of taking that idea and implementing it into a more Panzer Corps-esque supply system or a more Panzer Corps-esque combat system. Um, yeah. So, we've got some artillery, we'll just go ahead and shell the bunker. And of course, we can do the same with um, naval units, although at this stage, I think I'd rather use my naval units to clear off their naval units, basically. Um, we can see here we got mines, those are something that these support ships, so not a supply ship, a support ship, can actually come in and act as a minesweeper to clear those out. Anyway. Uh, what we're basically doing here is just a full-on naval invasion of the island. We got here a 75 millimeter GMC truck. Take out that bunker. Now we can see here, uh, this is blocked out, but we can switch this particular unit to be an indirect fire and there's a lot of units that can switch firing types so obviously any aircraft can switch to um, anti-tank and so on and so forth so one thing that's different between this and Panzer Corps so in Panzer Corps if you had an artillery unit next to an infantry unit that artillery unit would support you in combat that doesn't happen here but what does happen is anti-tank units support infantry units being attacked by tanks. I've found that this makes anti-tank units far more important and usable in the game. You're going to want to make sure you've got at least one or two anti-tank units to assist in your assaults. One other thing that's slightly different about this game um, it is called Order of Battle, and Order of Operations is incredibly important. So, um, with resupply, for instance, you can see we can resupply this guy, uh, which we're going to do. Not a core unit, so we'll give him the cheap stuff. You can move a unit and resupply, but you can't fire and resupply. So you can advance units and replenish their stock, but you can't have them fight and replenish their stock, which really does make a lot of sense. So, um, we're obviously not going to attack in that situation. We will just leave our tank doing nothing, and we've got a fighter unit that I'm just going around trying to find their aircraft so I can teach them a lesson and do a little bit of scouting as well. And I think that's going to be it. Yeah, we don't need to worry about those guys or those guys. Actually, we can just turn these guys on to snooze. Because we're not going to necessarily need to move our supply ships off of the beaches. As long as they're on the beaches, they can provide supply. And then once you're able to capture towns, you'll get more supply. And the ability to deploy more units and, and you know, things of that nature. It's pretty sensical. So I think that's about it. 
We've got no opportunity to actually land this guy. That is my own fault, of course, for not planning this out correctly. And we are going to replace some losses here because we need to. We'll just go ahead. I don't care about those. We'll end the turn. So one of the nice things, <clears throat> and I, I'm not going to go too much into the combat of this game, even though it is like the, the main part of this game, I'm going to cover that in a video series. Because this game is just, it's, you know, I mean, it's more, what, oh, that's a, it's a dive bomber squadron that I decided to send up right next to their Warhawk. It's important, as always pay attention in strategy games. We're going to pull this guy back because he's taking far too much damage. Anyway, like I say, I'm not going to concentrate too much on the combat of this game. It's a lot like Panzer Corps. There's subtle differences and I can cover that much better in a full series. Uh, what I will do though is just uh, finish up with some interface stuff. So um, as we can see, if we click on the date, we'll get the objectives. Um... What else can I show? I guess we can go over the options, too. That's probably a good idea. So we can see here we've got our save and load. We've got our preferences. You know, graphics options aren't really necessary in a 2D game like this, but there's there's plenty of graphic options to go around and the end turn warnings, which is great. So you can turn this off if you don't care about any warnings, if you only want aircraft with low fuel, unmoved transports, unmoved units, whatever. Uh, we can... Take a look at the controls. It's pretty simple. I've got it set to two button because I've got a two button mouse. You might as well use it. Map scroll speed, zoom speed. We've got the um, the keyboard commands. We can do, you know, performance. I haven't really messed around with any of this. I've just left it basically as stock and then audio and video. Obviously, one thing I will note, this game is very loud. So keep that in mind. Um, but that's pretty much all that I really feel like I need to cover here uh, when it comes to core gameplay because it's basically the same as Panzer Corps and that is believe me when I say this that is not a bad thing Panzer Corps is a great game and this game so far has proven to be not just as good but there's differences there's iterations there's it's an improvement and I like it. That's pretty much all I got to say about that. And I am purposely trying to keep this video short because it's more of a review of the game than it is of a beginning of a let's play. Because we'll take care of that when the series starts. So if you're just here checking out the reviews, you know, I'm, maybe I'm not giving enough information because you don't know my history. But I was a pretty big fan of Panzer Corps. And this is... You know, it's it's more of the same, but don't take that as a bad thing. More of the same is good in this case. Because really, there's not a whole heck of a lot of, um, of you know, hex-based tactical war games like this anymore. So seeing more of these coming out, that's a good thing. Uh, one thing I will go over that is different is the terrain. So... As you can see, when I go to move my tank into the jungle, for instance, we've got that big minus one. What that's going to do, as you can see, as soon as I move into the jungle, the organization, I don't know if that's actually what it's called in game, but that's what I call it. The organization of this unit drops down. And so in this case, you know, going from a white to a, to a yellow, that's not too bad. But, uh, you know, before I fully understood all the intricacies of the game design I was you know having to hold off advances for quite a while just to because I was pushing troops through jungle and that's not a good thing to do so um, yeah that that pretty much covers the basics of this game And obviously, as strength decreases, it's going to be easier to hit them. All the things you would come to expect. So let's go ahead and um, go back to the main menu. And we've got just a few other things. We've got an editor. 
<clears throat> which is apparently going to take a little while to load. But what this lets you do, as you can see, is develop your own scenarios. So I'm not much of a scenario developer. I'm, you know, it's been a long time since I've gone and um, placed maps and done my own thing like that. But you can absolutely spend the time going in here and, you know, designing your own levels, getting units in and all that other stuff. So, I mean, that's pretty cool. But it also is pretty standard with games like this. Uh, we've got play by email multiplayer. Not really. We got hot seat. So if you're at the same computer, that's not going to be a problem. Or the PBM, PBEM plus plus server. So it kind of gets a real time thing going on. If everybody's logged in and, and checking at the same time, if not, you know, you take your turn. The next player takes their turn and, you know, you can you can take it at whatever pace you want, which is pretty cool. And then when we take a look at the uh, the single player, we've got the campaigns, which has the boot camp, which is tutorials, the Imperial Japanese campaign, and the Pacific Allies campaign. And I'd like to stress the Pacific Allies because, you know, not nest. You're going to be an American in the Allied campaign, but you're going to also be able to fight with uh, Philippine units, uh, Commonwealth units. There's a whole host of factions in here. Uh, I know in my Japanese playthrough, the the first or second mission, uh, well, the first mission was Pearl Harbor, so that was strictly Japan versus U.S. But, you know, in the second and third mission, you were going after Dutch ships, British ships, Australian ships, Australian troops, all this stuff. So it's not just Japan and America. There's a lot of other things, although you will be taking it from a Japanese or an American standpoint. So those are going to be your core units. Those are going to be the units that you work with uh, throughout the campaign. And when I now, you know, it's, it's a it's a it's a linear campaign with slight differences that can happen with secondary objectives and things of that nature. Uh, both end campaigns and I haven't reached either end campaign i think the furthest i got was around 43 or 44 uh the japanese campaign uh if you play it right ends with an invasion of australia the american campaign if you play it right ends with an invasion of japan so you can get units uh as the americans that are nuclear units so uh nuclear bombers but they're more of a tactical nuke not really a strategic nuke so if you drop it it wipes out the unit that it hits and, and damages units around it that kind of thing, but it's not like you're wiping out entire cities or anything like that. It's it's more of a tactical nuclear option. And, um, you know, that's that's pretty much it. Some people might be disappointed without the, the multi-branching campaign tree, but I'll, I'll be honest, it can get convoluted and it can get messy, I guess would be a way to describe it. So keeping the campaign pretty much set with differences in the mission. So for a good example, other than the paratroopers showing up in that tutorial mission uh, in Pearl Harbor, if you're the Japanese and you fail to sink all the battleships, or if you're the Americans and you're able to protect battleships, in the next few missions, you'll get those surviving battleships added into your forces so you'll just get like a free battleship in a in a mission battleships are incredibly expensive strong units so that's a good thing you know to just get a free one because you did well in another mission i like that i like that a lot and it feels like while you're on this track you can affect it and you can make it so that your units do you know are more effective or better or if you shoot down enough aircraft in the pearl harbor attack for a long time japan is going to have an issue with the quality of fighter pilots they can field so you can still field tons of fighters but you know they're going to they're going to come at, a, at an experience disadvantage because you don't have those experienced pilots that got shot down at pearl harbor uh, if you're the Japanese and you're able to take out all the battleships and all the fuel reserves, there's going to be supply issues facing the Americans for the for the initial stages of the war, and it's going to make your job easier. And each mission has those secondary objectives, and each mission has like two or three secondary objectives. So you can really change the state 
of a campaign with those secondary objectives. And then, and in some of them, you're going to have to choose. So like in Pearl Harbor, it says shoot down X amount of aircraft, uh, you know, protect this, protect that, get this, get that. And, you know, you're only going to be able to pull off two or three of those, but it's going to have snowball effects throughout the rest of the campaign, which is really cool. So we're hitting around the 30 minute mark, and that's kind of what I wanted to hit. If this wasn't enough of a look for you, I do apologize. But hey, if you feel like checking out a Let's Play series, keep looking at this channel. There's going to be one coming incredibly shortly. And if you are interested in seeing a Let's Play series, I want you to let me know in the comments what you want to see, whether it's the Imperial Japan or the Pacific Allies. Both of them are great campaigns. Let me know what you want to see, and I will happily provide. So in the comments below, let me know. Uh, thumbs up if you have enjoyed this video. And uh, yeah, that was that was a very brief look at uh, Order of Battle Pacific. Let's get the nice title screen there. Uh, yeah, so... Let me know what you guys want to see, and thank you all very much for watching, checking out this video, we'll see you next time.